is so from back my little shed again. Uh, back with this little green GSX 750 chopper. Um, still on with making the exhaust. You see, I started making the flanges and stuff the other week. Uh, coming here last night, uh, not got a lot much done, but pulled all the stuff off that I don't want anymore. Like unplugged the wiring, brakes all disconnected. Um, so I can take the front end off and the least amount of pieces possible. Uh, back wheel's got to come out, change scrap anyway, so that's in the bin. Um, yeah, my plan is to take the front end back end off and lift the bike up and stand it. So lean it against that filing cabinet vertical, uh, get a bunch of light in the corner because I'll make the exhaust with the bike upside down. Easier, easier to do, you can see what you're doing. And you, better chance of getting the thing symmetrical um got a bunch of stainless uh bends and stuff in the other room uh so yeah once i've got the thing stripped and stood up then i'll start chopping and changing that so yeah i'll just go about ripping that apart One thing that this has just revealed, taking that wheel out, is that I've done half of these spaces in stainless steel. Um, a lot of the others are just mild steel. Uh, I've no idea why I would have done that, but back back then when I first made this frame and made this bike, I think we didn't even have a lathe then. I think we were making spaces in the village up. Uh, so I'm guessing we just didn't have the material because I mean this thing was built on a budget. I think it was built for about a thousand quid or something. Uh, so yeah, that's some more jobs to do. Got to uh, get those guys and uh, remake them again. I'll just copy them. They obviously worked. They don't look very nice. That's all off and one big lump now, so I don't need to worry about that again. I'm going to put that in the, uh, in the house out the way. Right, so now I've just got to figure out a way of getting this lot up in the air without busting myself in half. I think I'll put the axle back in and pivot it on that. So I'll have to think about it. Uh, we've swung it around a little bit. Uh, we've got the these axle stands, yeah, nicely uh, dangerously balanced under there. You know, uh, you got to make sure you've got them at different heights because, you know, it's more dangerous that way. Uh, and yeah, I'm uh, just in my own bumbling way. I'm just kind of trying to figure out a way of uh, lifting this up here, but you know. If anything goes wrong, I'm sure one of you guys will ring an ambulance or something, you know. That'll be okay. So, that's it there. Uh, get a level like that, at least that's somewhere safe. I've got a jack under this lifting me up at the minute. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and go as high as I can and reposition the jack. Um, just save me back a little bit. So here we go.
guys hopefully uh, you can see that okay I've uh, got this thing standing upright on the tail now um, I won't I didn't show the uh, the actual lift of it because to be honest I wouldn't recommend it uh, it wasn't ideal I had a big dangerous flipping pile of flipping old batteries and all sorts balanced on the thing and then a wobbly car jack and you know we got it we got it up in the end but you know, I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own get you know, get a get a mate if you gotta go do it this way but the reason for doing it is so we can get the thing up here and we can work on it um at sort of face height and as you say I put one of the stubs and flanges on there you know it's just easier you, you can see the whole bottom of the bike and you can get the thing symmetrical you know I've I've, I've done it this way a load of times and I just find it I just find it easier uh, I've got a bunch of bits down here as you see there's some of them things which I made, which, which I made uh, in the last video since then these uh, flanges have arrived uh, and I've got a couple of 180 degree bends there <coughs> uh, these I'm gonna cut one of, one of them at about 120 degrees the other one about 60 so they will kind of like fit there like that and go to start building the building the exhaust straight off straight off that there um uh, i'm gonna just now i'm gonna take that oil curler out of the way um won't stop it stop me damaging it because uh, there's not there's nothing wrong with it. it just needs a clean up and uh to just I, I know that it's that the pipes aren't going to get in the way of anything there everything's everything's clear i know i know where them lines are going to be and i can always make some new lines up if, if, if it's a problem later on um but there's no reason why i can't keep all our stands so i'm going to go ahead and set the camera up i'll get that off i'll start putting the uh flanges on i've made these two little uh two little spaces in the lathe there I'll, I'll screw them on there to blank off the motor this is still the old the old engine that's coming out this one needs a top end refresh on it um it the, the rings are shot uh so i'll put the new motor in and i'll rebuild that at a later date i'll probably make a video of that actually but that's no story i'll uh i'll just set this set this thing up so you can see what i'm doing and follow it along. Bear with me a minute. Okay, now I've got that squared up. I'll uh, get this oil cooler out of the way. And I'll start fitting the bits and pieces we've got made ready. Okay, so I'm going to try and figure out how I'm going to space out the pipes. Probably, uh, probably a batten across the uh, cable tie across the frame there. Get them all, get them all level. Sometimes you space out the middle two slightly more than the outside ones, just a couple of mil, because otherwise, if they're completely flat. It's an optical illusion, it looks like the middle two is shorter. I don't know why, it just, just seems to work like that. Oh, I'll give it a shot anyway. And I want this to follow the line of the frame perfectly. So, what we got I in the roof that I can use as a spacer? That's 
Ben zevkli olsa neymiş? Kurtan oğlum lan bu stekini atıyor ha. Bu betül kavuş. Ben de melt the frame up bebe. Straight, uh, turn these things off. Okay, I smell one of my house. I'm close to get that guy. That's about 15 mil under there, and that's 20 odd, 23 something, so we're going to halve that first. So we'll start by making four of them, and I'll just cut them straight on the, on the 90 degree there, just for simplicity. That is, by coincidence, the right angle for the frame as well. And let's crack on with that, and set, set the uh, camera up over here again. I'll mark it out. Okay, hopefully uh, you can see what I'm doing there because I can't see uh, I can't see what's in frame and what's not. But you're probably used to my bad uh, filmmaking skills by now, so. Probably a, a proper fast way of uh, marking this out, so you get it straight all the way around. But give us that works for me. If there's any little gaps, we'll uh, we'll just stuff a lot more welding. So that's two of them.
né? Nou, uh, van de Amstelsjoen of Tesla. Zo, zeg eens, de Amstelsjoen, ons daar. Dat is hem, dat is hem. Nou, zo. Ik hoop je kan zien dat ook, hè? Dat is wat ook wel een wandtaak. En deze. Een koppel van millimeters. Ik hoop dat. Het zijn millimeters, actually. Dus dat is een nice easy. Dat is een nice easy, nu moet het zich af. I think we're going to have to have a little slice. Do you know what? I might make the middle ones first. That might be a little bit more sensible. Start in the middle and work out that the one end, one way across. Still needs 10 mil out of it. The outer two. I need to twist out to give us a little bit of breathing room on the frame. These ones we've got miles. Uh, chances are when I made this frame, I probably built it around stock pipes or maybe some Delco or something which is thinner. But that's not a problem. We'll just we'll just put a pizza slice in it and just angle it out a little bit. So the next when I do these end ones. I'll take 8 mil off instead of 10 and then I'll put a little pizza slice in it and send it out. Uh, I'll do. Uh, I want my 10 mil off this. Uh, so we've got two of these now cut to uh, cut to shape. This one here is ready to be tacked in. Uh, they're both sitting parallel with one another from where I'm I'm looking down at it. This one here has just got a little bit more adjustment to me. Um, and I'll I'll get this fella on my left ear tacked on and then I'll adjust that one up and make it match that perfectly. Right, so hopefully you can see this okay. Now that one's uh, on there good and tight-ish. Right, and I've got this guy. I just went away and I, uh, I basically copied it. Um, those two are both parallel from where I'm standing here now. And if I go around the other side, there you are, and line that up. That pipe's dead level with this one on number three cylinder. So I want no problem now just sticking that on. Um because it's up because it's cut level, you know, it can go on at any orientation because it will twist in the uh, in the head in the clamp there, but yeah, you know, we'll try and uh, try and get it somewhere straight line. Just gonna get a little uh, little of a snot on that. 
open there on top of this knot I've created. Well, safety hazards in here. Look. Okay, so I'll just take that one off and uh, give that a stronger weld. Okay, so I've had that, uh, I've had that fella off now and I've uh, put a bit more strength into that. Uh, these are as as strong as they need to be for uh, this section of the job um, I'll just take you down here just show you from my point of view there we are that's uh, you can see that's pretty symmetrical don't worry about the phase of the uh, the openings there because they obviously twist on the header but from uh, from that side and right I'm gonna plug this look down the side there they're both they're both dead straight and the openings are pretty parallel put the other weldings all the way oh, I'll show you the bit that I can't see uh, for now I think uh, for now I think you can see where I'm going with this uh, next, uh, the next two, they need to be angled out slightly. So I'll cut them the same, but then I'll be putting a notch in just after the uh, just after the first weld, and uh, just to tip it away from the frame there slightly, and uh, that'll stop me burning up paint or powder coat, whatever I decide to do with the finish. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it green for now, uh, but for tonight and as much noise as I can make. Without uh, really upsetting my neighbours, I'm gonna uh, I wrap this one up and I'll come back tomorrow and do some more. And hopefully, I've got the uh, the straight sections in stock by then, where we can start by building some length on the thing. But in the meantime, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers for the subscriptions. Just broke the uh, 300 marks. So that's pretty cool. I'll keep on adding to this GSX playlist and the other playlists as I go. But in between then now. Uh, keep it through the ditches. Thanks guys.